What's up YouTube, Tactical Suite here once again. So if you've been with me for a while, you may notice that some of my older videos from let's say a year ago or more, the sound quality on those is not that great. The volume is really low and it's hard to understand some of the things I'm saying unless you really crank up the volume. So in an effort to bring you guys uh, the best quality possible, I'm going to be redoing some of those older videos, specifically the ones that I feel contain valuable information. Um, so this is going to be the first of those videos and we're going to be going over the full disassembly and reassembly of a Glock pistol. Alright, let's get in it. Alright, so the only tools you're going to need for this, right here we have a 330 seconds punch, uh, any hardware store punch will do. And here we got a little pick that will come in handy when you're removing the spring for the magazine release. Alright, so first things first, safe weapon, point a safe direction, pull the trigger. Then you're going to pull your slide back about a quarter of an inch or so. Pull down your slide lock lever and the slide will come off. Set the grip frame aside for now and we'll get to that in a few minutes. Alright, so your general field strip, recoil spring, barrel, and that's all you really need to do for most cases for your general cleaning and maintenance. But every, I'd say about every six months or so, I like to fully disassemble this and give it what I call a deep cleaning. So in order to do that, you got to start with your end plate. In order to get that off, if you look here on your striker, you got this black sleeve and what you need to do with that is push that down like so to relieve tension on that end plate. So what I'd like to do, set it down on the table, stick the punch in there and push down, take your thumb and slide the end plate off. Uh, be careful to keep your thumb there because as you release that there, are, there is spring tension under there and you don't want things to go flying. They usually won't pop out of there, but just to be safe. All right, so next we take our striker out and then the extractor depressor. Flip the slide over so the extractor is over the palm of your hand. Push down on your firing pin safety plunger there and the extractor will fall right out into your hand. And then pull your plunger out. All right, and that's it, fully disassembled. What I'll do at this point is I'll get down in here in this in this channel where the striker rides and clean up any kind of dirt and carbon buildup you have in there. Um, over time, stuff can build up in there and it can affect the the movement of the striker inside of there. If you get enough buildup in there, it might cause uh, light primer strikes, stuff like that. So periodically, I'll get in there and clean it out. You may need to do this more often than I do or less often than I do depending on how much you shoot uh, some people you know you might never do this and your gun might shoot fine but you know if you do shoot a lot it's a good thing to clean out every now and then alright so we're gonna set all this aside for now and we'll work on the grip frame alright so for the disassembly of the frame everything is essentially held together by three pins you have your the bigger trigger pin here your locking block pin here and back here you got your trigger housing pin. The the first the one I start with is the locking block pin and I'm going to go left to right with all these pins. Take your punch, push on the locking block pin and it should come out the other side. Pull it through. Now, your trigger pin depending on your gun can be a little little tricky. Uh, sometimes they're a little hard to get out so um, the trick to it is your slide release lever here you want to grab that and kinda wiggle it up and down front and back as you're pushing on the pin because sometimes it can catch on there and wiggling that back and forth will help release it so I'm gonna try to do this in frame uh, sometimes mine can be a little bit tricky so I might need to pull it out of frame to get a little bit more leverage but we're gonna try it so you want to push in on it and then wiggle, and there you go. She popped out easily this time. All right, now you can grab your slide release lever and pull that out. Move back here to the trigger housing pin. 
push that one through. Next up, the locking block. You just grab this, or sometimes you might need to kind of pry on it with the punch a little bit. It should pull up out of there pretty easily, though. Next up, grab onto your uh, ejector here and pull up, and your whole trigger assembly should come out. Now, in most cases, that's as far as you ever really need to disassemble it. But I'm going to show you the last couple steps just to do a full disassemble here. So your slide lock lever here, in order to remove that, you have a spring down here. What you're going to do is take your punch and push down on that, and this should pop right out. And then you can just grab your spring, and as you can see, it's just a little kind of L-shaped spring there. Now the last step, um, you shouldn't really ever have to do this uh, unless, as I said, maybe you're a lefty and you want to switch your mag release over to the other side because it is ambidextrous, you can switch it. Um, but we'll show you how to do that. If you look down in the mag well, hopefully you can see it, there's a, a long wire spring that run, runs along the front side of the mag well. What we're going to do we're going to take this pick, we're going to grab that, and we're going to push it to the right. Pull it to the right and, and out. And it should pop out of the channel that it sits in. And as you can see, right there, it popped out. Then all you have to do is push on your mag release, and it should come out the other side. Just got to give it a little pull. And there it is. So there you have full disassembly. Now, for your reassembly, we're basically going to go in reverse order with one exception, and that's going to be with the, the pins, the order that I put them back in. And I'll get back to that in a second. But, first things first, your mag release. Now, if you try to put this in here right now, because that spring is sitting there, it's kind of going to be in the way. So what I do is I take the pick again and I pull, I wedge it behind there and kind of pull it out of the way. And then with the other hand, I will get the mag release in there. All right, now it's in place, but we got to get it locked back in. So again, what you're going to do, grab that wire and you're going to push it again to the right and it'll pop back into the spot where it came out of. So as I push here, you'll see it disappear here in a second. And there it goes. It'll click in there. Just give it a test to make sure it's functioning, and it is. All right. For your slide lock. All right. The spring is basically going to sit in this channel right here. Right in that spot. You know, put that L side down, push it down in the spot, and it'll lock it. Now the thing to remember with your slide lock here, if you look at it, it's got kind of a, a groove in there on one side, and it's smooth on the other side. When you put it back in, you want that groove to be facing you as you're holding the gun. If you put it in the other way, you're going to have some problems. So, again, we take our punch and push down on the spring. And then slide it back in. Again, with that groove facing you. Once it's in the middle, let it go. Simple. Alright. Next up, put our trigger back in. Just slide it back into place. Next up, locking block. Again, just slides back into place. Now here is where I kind of break from the reverse order a little bit. I, uh, If I were to put the, the slide release in and then put the trigger pin in, what would happen 
if you look, you see this little wire spring on there. Once this is in place, that wire spring will block the hole for your locking block pin. And you'll have to try and fish it down out of the way and push the pin through. So I choose to put this pin in first. And then I'll pop the slide release back in. And that spring will then slide right underneath of the locking block pin. Now, one thing you can see here, if you look through the hole for the trigger pin there, as I move the slide release lever, you can see it kind of blocking the hole. So, as I said, when you were taking the pin out, the same applies when you're putting it in. Wiggle that slide release lever if you're having issues to get it to line up. And there she goes. Pop our trigger housing pin back in. And then we'll just give all of our pins just a little push to make sure they're in there. And there we go. Frame back together again. Alright, let's move on to the slide. Okay, so again, reverse order. Take our firing pin safety plunger, drop that down in the hole. And we're going to take our extractor, and this little circular piece is going to go towards the back of the slide. And you're going to pop that into place, but if you let it go, you'll notice it drops out. So push down on your plunger, and it'll lock into place. Then flip it back over, take your extractor depressor there, spring side up, send it down the hole, take your striker, set that in there. Now with your end plate, what you want to do, you can't get her started because again this black sleeve is in the way. So push down on that black sleeve and that should get it started but then your extractor depressor is going to be in the way. So take your punch, push down on that extractor depressor, and your end plate will go on. Now at this point, uh, I like to test out this safety. Anytime I mess with the internals, I always do this. So if you look, right here is where your firing pin comes out. So if you grab on here and you move it up and down, you'll notice it doesn't come out. But then if you push on your plunger there, you'll notice firing pin does extend now. Let it go. It shouldn't extend. So just something I like to do whenever I mess with the internals just to make sure it's working as it should. All right. Just drop a barrel in. Recoil spring back in. And slide it back together. Now, as always, anytime you disassemble and reassemble, Always do a good function check on your weapon. Make sure it's working properly. So again, point in a safe direction and pull the trigger. You should hear it fire. Hold on to the trigger, run your slide, and then release your trigger slowly. You should feel that reset, and it should fire again. And that's a good function check of your Glock pistol. So there you go, guys. Start to finish, full disassembly and reassembly of a Glock pistol. Uh, this will work for Gen 3 and Gen 4. I've never messed with Gen 2 and earlier, so there may be some differences. I, I don't think they would be that great if they are, but definitely for Gen 3 and Gen 4, these same instructions are going to work. Alright guys, please let me know what you think in the comments. If you like what I'm doing, please give me that thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with any new videos we got coming out. Always trying to get more out for you guys. Uh, and look forward to more of these remakes of the older videos. Alright guys, till next time, live life and have fun out there.